I heard this one might be gruesome, boss. All the more reason to catch this bastard. Somebody do this. They were innocent. Don't matter. See what we can find. You check down the hall. Right. Urban nation. Put your hands in the air. Going away for a long time, you bastard. Naughty Bear has cursed me. Most of you don't know this game and why it has the capacity to take over somebody's life. So let me give you a brief description. Naughty Bear was released in 2010 and was developed by Artificial Mind and Movement and published by 505 Games. The cover of the game depicts a gruff looking teddy bear poking through a broken wooden door, most likely a reference to 1980's The Shining, as the teddy bear is seen holding a machete with the frightened reflection of a cop teddy bear. This bear is the naughty bear. This bear is you. And this bear's name is Naughty. <laughs> Na, 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 Naughty Bear is an action game all about increasing your score so that you can unlock the various locked things in the game. And the way that you get the highest score is by tormenting and killing other teddy bears. <laughs> This game is set on Perfection Island, home to a swath of colorful teddy bear residents who just love to have fun. The other thing they have in common is that they hate Naughty Bear. In the first cutscene of the game, we see Naughty arrive at a birthday party for the green teddy bear, Daddles. Naughty then gets laughed at and ridiculed by the other bears. You see, Naughty was not invited. This event kicks off the main objective of the game to kill the other bears and ruin whatever they are doing, all the while gaining points. You gain points for killing and tormenting the other bears in the most horrific ways possible. Sounds fun for a 13 year old, maybe, but it's a bit edgy and crude to consider this something an adult would buy. Good thing then that this game is rated T for teens due to the lack of blood since, as you could guess, all the bears are filled with stuffing. And oh, the ways you can spill that stuffing. When I was a 10 year old boy, and I was walking around my local Walmart, looking for a game to buy for my birthday, I saw the cover of Naughty Bear for the first time. The aura this game emitted was strange. I felt as if a curse was being put upon me. So I walked away and got a different game. One year later I crossed paths with Naughty Bear again. When my mother told me my brother and I could pick out one game as long as it was in the bargain bin. And there he was with those black eyes with the hate filled white dots staring into my soul. I went home that day and put the game into my PlayStation 3, turned it on and started the game. I don't remember playing the game. I don't remember doing anything in the game. I just remember it being fun. After a long hiatus away from the PS3, as a now 23 year old man, I looked through my old collection to find Naughty once again staring at me. I felt the same fear that that cop bear felt. So I put the game into my dusty PlayStation, plugged in the HDMI cord into my fourth monitor, and started up the game. 
Despite its edgy cover art and game screen, when the game loads you are met with cheery music and happy cute stitch bears inviting you in, and the rough, ear torn off, naughty. I want to note here the soundtrack of this game. Its whimsical, happy mood is never switched off. Despite the obvious dark undertones of the game, the facade of teddy bear playtime never leaves your ears. Its cute hums and joyous drums still haunt my dreams. We are then taken to the main menu screen. The first thing that caught my attention was the existence of a multiplayer mode. The multiplayer mode was strange. Death matches and races to see who among the populace would be the most naughty. Now, if you go into multiplayer, it's completely empty. A reminder of this game's legacy as a forgotten oddity. Before we press play game, I find it nearly integral to take a quick gander at the manual. It does a better job of getting you into the swing of things, much better than the very basic tutorial. The manual takes you through just about everything you need to obtain a reliable high score, which is the fundamental point of the gameplay. It tells you about the challenges that appear on each episode of the game as well as explaining the score strategy to earn the most naughty points and how repeated actions deprecate the amount of points you can earn. When you're ready to start being naughty, it takes you to the chapter select screen. You will notice there are seven total episodes, six of which are locked. Each new episode unlocked will grant you a new, strange mission to go on, starting small with birthday parties and mayor elections, but devolve into zombie apocalypses and aliens, robo-bears and even a capitalistic oil baron mission. The Oil Baron mission is my favorite. You will see next to each locked mission that they require a certain number and rarity of trophy to unlock them. Trophies are the way you progress in this game on every level. Bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. The only trophies that matter are gold. Always go for gold. The reason I say that is because once you choose the mission you want to go on, you are met with the costume select screen. There are 30 unlockable costumes, but 7 of them you get just for completing the first mission of every episode, and another 7 for getting gold. The only trophies that matter are gold. Always go for gold. All these costumes are useless. That leaves the other 16. You get another 7 costumes for getting bronze on the 3 challenge missions for each episode, and another 7 for getting gold. The only trophies that matter are gold. These last group of 14 costumes are the only truly useful ones, since they grant you the walk amongst others unnoticed perk. This is essential for setting up and maximizing your points since you don't have to stay completely hidden. Out of all the costumes you can get, the best one by far is the Master Miyagi costume, due to its high speed. Probably the most useful stat for the amount of timed events in the game and the fact that the score multiplier will go down, if you aren't fast enough. And you do not want the score multiplier to go down. The last two costumes are unlocked by obtaining a total of 100 million naughty points. And the last one is to get gold on all the top hat challenges. I think it's about time that I explain the challenge missions. Under each episode, you will unlock three challenge levels that require you to complete the main mission again, but with a twist. These consist of killer, you must kill all the bears, friendly, you can't hit the bears. Insanity, you must drive all the bears insane. Untouchable, you must not take damage. Speed run, a time-based mode. Invisible, you can't get spotted. And lastly, under every episode, there is a fourth challenge, known as the Top Hat Challenge, where the bears deal more damage and are equipped with powerful ray guns and the score requirement is much higher to obtain gold, making it the hardest challenge for every mission. Except this one insanity challenge, where the bears will decide to kill each other for some reason. I played this mission for like six hours. That's a lot of hours. You failed! In 
order for me to call this game complete, it is required to obtain gold on each and every one of these missions, and every time I make a mistake, I must replay it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. I still haven't completed this game, and it's been five months. The strategy I concocted for getting the gold trophy for every mission of this game goes as follows. First, I focused on obtaining the Master Miyagi costume by completing both episode 1 and 2 with gold trophies. These are by far the easiest episodes, and once I got the Master Miyagi costume, I was fully in my element. Now with the power to not immediately strike fear into every bear that sees me, I do this in order. First, I sabotage all the escape routes meaning the cars and the boats on the outskirts of the island. This is essential in allowing you to have the time to get to the bears that are attempting to run. Second, I place one to two traps in highly populated areas, and then I go around and sabotage as many things as possible without being seen. Eventually, a bear will attempt to fix something or get caught in a trap, and then the naughtiness begins. Third, is killing or scaring the bears in the proper locations with the optimal timing. If a bear is alone and no other bears witness the murder, I opt to scare the bear so to optimize score for killing the bear in front of others. This is a very naughty thing to do, and it will traumatize as many bears that see it. My favorite outcome is to get a bear in a trap and then wait for another bear to help them. Then I come in killing the helping bear and then scare the trapped bear, leaving him injured and one step closer to insanity. If you drive a bear insane, just their presence alone allows you to get more points. Every time a bear sees them, you get more score. And if you see an insane bear in front of other bears, you can scare the bear again and get the bear to defluff themselves. Having a bear to fluff themselves in front of other bears is by far the best for obtaining score. So the optimal way to do this is to get the score multiplier up to 100. Then, grab a score multiplier freeze, and then perform your devious acts. Doing this method, it is common for me to get a bronze or silver trophy before crossing the bridge, a halfway point of each mission that takes you to the next area, where you must kill a specific bear. Once you kill the specific bear, you're able to complete the mission. Completing missions unlocks more missions. Doing good and getting gold on missions gets you more missions. You do this until you have done them all and when you get gold on every single one, you win the game. But is it really all that simple? As you struggle to make it through this game, trying again and again to perfect your score, you are shown some semblance of this game's story. Episode 1, The Party. This episode focuses on Daddles, the bright green bear with a childish heart, and brings happiness to the whole island. Because the other bears care so much about Daddles, they decide to throw him a birthday party. A party that Naughty is not invited to. And we all know how that goes. What you need to know about Daddles is that he runs away, and that he is easy to drive insane. Episode 2, Top Teddy. Chubby believes he was born to lead. At a young age, he took it upon himself to look out for the other bears, taking on responsibilities, like making sure the boats and cars are in working order, that all housing is arranged, and that the factory continues to run properly, and that all the parties and fun events go on without a hitch. With election year coming up, Chubby decides to run for mayor, and get the support of the other bears. He runs on the promise that he will finally eliminate Naughty Bear. The bears are Joyce, but Naughty is ready to end this campaign. What you need to know about Chubby is that he is brave and will try to fix things when they're broken. Episode 3, Big Ted is Watching. Cozy has a strange relationship with the other bears. He sees himself as the big brother of the other bears, giving them tough love. But some of the other bears only see him as a bully. Being slightly larger and more athletic than the other bears, Cozy always tapped into his competitive side, getting the nickname the Red Rhino. 
but Cozy quickly grew to enjoy the power he had over the other bears. This ego ran unchecked on the island, to the point that Cozy got in cahoots with the military and set up a surveillance state, literally using camera birds. You know I'm not saying anything about our government, but have you really looked into the eye of a bird recently? This disturbance, however, enrages Naughty, who is not fond of spies. What you need to know about Cozy is that he is prone to attack you, and that he is easy to drive insane. Episode 4, Night of the Living Ted Nibbles was always a special child. He just grasped concepts a bit differently than most, but his enigmatic charm always spread joy to the other bears, especially when he discovered his long-hidden talent of cooking. To show off his new skills and to make something nice for the other bears, Nibbles begins weekly cooking classes, but due to the nerves he feels teaching his first class, Nibbles grabs the wrong cookbook. Instead, he grabs the Book of the Dead. Why is that book there? And by saying the incantation, Nibbles brings upon the wrath of the Unted, who begins to kill everyone on the island. Hey, that's Naughty's job. What you need to know about Nibbles is that he is easy to drive insane. Episode 5, The Oil Baron's Ball. Trembles comes from money. His family is the family that funds Paradise Island in exchange to have their factories run on the island. Trembles, on his own venture, leaves the island to find success as an oil baron. He does find success, and he brings back a dastardly idea as well. With his understanding of the island's geography, Trembles decides that he is going to drill for oil on the island. The real estate he chooses is right on Naughty's hut. So, Naughty readies himself for gruesome revenge. What you need to know about Trembles is that he will fight you and that he is hard to drive insane. Episode 6, R15300FR0B0B34R or Rise of Robo Bear. Fluffy was born with a head three times the size of his body. His intelligence far exceeds that of the average bear. However, this led Fluffy to distance himself from the other bears, focusing on his studies. He found something that science was having a hard time explaining, leading Fluffy down an expanse of understanding. Fluffy returns with the power to create robot bears, to begin helping him in the creation of a hyper-advanced AI that will revolutionize life on the island. This is the episode that makes me question the English narrator. How does he know all of this stuff? How does he know that the giant robot will probably be a super brain? And how does he know what a zero point quantum grid resonator is? This game was made in 2010. People didn't have zero point quantum grid resonators like we do now. But tasked with something to destroy, Naughty obliges. What you need to know about Fluffy is that he likes to hide, but is often one to try and warn the other bears and barricade himself. Episode 7, When Aliens Attack Sunbeam is a curious bear. You can frequently find him looking under rocks and deep within crawl spaces of many houses on the island. Sunbeam is just one of those bears who has to know how everything works, how engines turn, how boats float, how the Fluff Owl sings such beautiful songs. In his quest of discovery, Sunbeam happened upon a telescope that he can use to look up into the firmament. Wait, 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 wait. what? The firmament? Like, the layer of water around the earth that was described in the Bible? The one that collapsed and rained down to the earth, causing the Great Flood? This states Naughty Bear's world before 2350 BC. Or, it means something even more sinister. While looking at the firmament, Sunbeam spots something. An alien UFO. He rushes to try to make contact, and he's successful. And then the aliens arrive and immediately put a brain control device on his head, and begin a takeover of the entire island. Naughty realizes the threat, and begins his rampage. The only thing you need to know about Sunbeam is that he's easy to drive insane. With every cutscene, you are familiarized with the pattern that these bears fall into. The bears try to do something, Naughty doesn't like it. The English narrator talks to Naughty and you, pushing him to kill the other bears, 
encouraging the naughty behavior. And lastly, Naughty kills the other bears, to the delight of the cheering narrator. Every time you kill a bear in a unique way, the narrator will give a whimsical nickname for the kill cutscene. And every time you kill a bear with one of these ultra kills, you must watch these cutscenes relentlessly, endlessly, over and over. Doesn't matter what bear, doesn't matter the motivation, we do it for the narrator. The ESRB, or Entertainment Software Rating Board, rating system was implemented in 1994 after congressional hearings after the release of games such as Mortal Kombat and Doom and dedicated itself to providing much needed information to the people who purchase games in North America. The ESRB has strict guidelines that gives video games a letter grading based on their more violent and adult themes. E for everyone, T for teens, and M for mature. The T rating is for kids age 13 or older, and it can contain moderate adult themes like light amounts of swearing and non-gruesome violence. But I want you to think for one minute the outrage a game like Naughty Bear would cause if it was rated T, but blood came out of the bears. But since they are just stuffed bears, the gore and gruesome murder is desensitized only by the fragile imagination of the person playing the game. I can't stop myself from imagining the bears as truly living things with their innards being spilled like canned beans, necks being snapped, and the horrifying conclusion these bears will come to when faced with the decision to leave their own fate with Naughty or to take matters into their own hands. This game was meant to invoke a specific response from its player base. The glorification of murder. Every kill is cheered on. The objective of the game is to kill and maim to reach a high score. A goal detached from this fluffy reality, the one that Naughty inhabits. And in a way, so do you. Naughty, also known as Naughty Bear, is the perfect surrogate for the player's selfish desires. You bought this edgy game from the bargain bin, and you brought it home and put it in your Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3, and fell immediately into Naughty's shoes. For no real reason, you began to kill the bears. They don't like Naughty. They don't like you. So, you murder them all, for some benign purpose presented to you by a happy Englishman, ushering you into a fluffy rampage. Just as easy as you gain points, Naughty kills the bears. While playing this game, you will notice the tip screen when loading into missions. Some are funny, some are actually helpful, and others are. Nibbles makes the most delicious peach pies. You remember Nibbles as the one who had the cooking class where he accidentally summoned zomb bears. He must really like cooking. The other bears must be so happy when they get to have some of his peach pie. You will end up spending a lot of time with these bears, but not at parties or at fun picnics you spend time tormenting them. You will learn which bears are aggressive and which bears are easy to drive insane long before you learn any of their personality traits. In fact, it took me all the way to the end of the game that the only personality trait I attributed to any of the bears was that they hated Naughty. Now that we have an understanding of the story and gameplay of Naughty Bear, it's time that we take a deeper look into the most mysterious figure in the entire game, the narrator. This Englishman is the only one in the game with spoken lines of dialogue. The other bears just speak in gibberish or screams, but the narrator's voice is ever present, explaining the events of the island and giving exposition. What is unique about the narrator is that Naughty actively listens to him even giving nods as a direct answer to the narrator's questions. The narrator also seems to have a form of omniscience, knowing what all the bears are up to and who is responsible for the latest catastrophe, each one ending in the narrator pushing Naughty to kill again. He knows about technology and ancient magic. He even knows about alien tech. If this was just a voice in Naughty's own head, 
This all wouldn't make sense. Naughty doesn't have the same knowledge that the narrator has. So, that means that the narrator is an independent entity. Who is he and what does he hope to achieve? What is his goal in all of this? What is Paradise Island? A secluded place away from the rest of the world, encased in the firmament, where these bears are doomed to repeat the same day where they run and hide from a point-collecting monster. This island is a prison. This island is punishment. And God put them there. The narrator put them there. Each bear has the great fear of having their perfect lives torn apart, so they live a repeat life where that happens. Naughty wants nothing but to be respected and accepted by the other bears, but he's always pushed to anger and revenge. You gather points, punished to repeat these missions until everything is perfect, until you reach the highest heights of the Naughty scoreboard and unlock every costume you can wear, all while the narrator cheers you on, encouraging your naughty behavior, encouraging you to get more points. Everyone is trapped in a cycle of death, rebirth, and shenanigans. And after it's too late, you will find out that you were trapped too. Your hands are the ones that committed these heinous acts, leading to the misery of all the bears, even Naughty. At the finale of the game, you are rewarded with one final cutscene. One that takes place after Naughty had saved the island from the aliens. The other bears invite Naughty to congratulate and thank him, but this only ends up being a trick. As they throw cake in his face, the cycle continues. The cycle will never break unless you do something about it. Unless you take your revenge on the narrator and free yourself. You must turn off the game in order to save the bears and yourself. But is that not what Naughty has been trying to do this whole time? When something feels wrong, he turns to revenge, continuing the cycle. Trying to break the cycle only repeats it. Every time you put this game away, it is only a matter of time before you pick it back up. The points calling to you, the voice becoming you. It's naughty time. This hell will never end. Are we all not doomed to repeat our past mistakes? To alienate those around us in hopes that one day they will be close? Do we not break and sabotage every day of our lives? Just normal life isn't keeping score. Only a nameless entity in our minds keeps score, and we listen to it. So how does it all end? How do we break this cycle and live life like we're supposed to? How will Naughty ever be accepted by the other bears? I don't know. I really don't know. And as I look at all the gold trophies, I only feel defeated. Not proud that I finally finished this game, but a sense that I'm not done yet. That there will come another time in my life where someone mentions a teddy bear, and the thought pops into my head, hey, I should play Naughty Bear, only to play it thinking it's going to be fun, believing, knowing that it is a curse that was left on my mind, and all this torment only left me feeling naughty. <laughs>